Thank you so much for coming into the studio to join us today. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, Happy to be here. So you played C2C over the weekend. I did. First how, time. how was it? It was amazing. You hear about these UK audiences as Americans. I mean, people rave about them. I've been hearing about it for years. So just to actually be able to come over here and experience it that, you know, the UK audiences, they really are. They're so, you guys are so attentive. You really listen. You know the <laughs> words. People are singing along. It was just a lovely experience. Yeah. It was really great. Yeah, it's a great event. Um, mm -hmm. And performing at the O2 as well. Yeah, I mean, who gets to say the first show in London is performing at the O2? <laughs> like, technically, that's what happened. It's amazing. Yeah, amazing. So um, you arrived in London last week, mm -hmm. um, but it's not your first experience of the UK, is it? You not actually technically. got stuck here in lockdown. I did, yeah. On October 20th, um, I booked some shows over here, and we all kind of thought everything seemed like it was on an upward trajectory of opening. And then 36 hours into my two-week quarantine, they shut the whole country down and closed the borders. And I was like, well, guess I'm here for a month. <laughs> so I stayed on a little farm in Surrey for the first two weeks and just kind of wandered around the countryside and wrote songs and sang to the sheep and stuff. And did get to walk around London a little bit, but it was a ghost town. It was yeah. a totally different experience being here now, which is nice. Yeah, it sounds like the makings of a film, that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so now you're obviously getting a chance to actually enjoy London mm. and see the country. You're heading off on tour, aren't I you? I am. Yeah, I'll be out the next three weeks with Sam Outlaw, so it's really exciting. Yeah, um, and so what are some of the parts of the UK that you're going to see? We're and... going all over England and then a little bit up to Scotland and back too. So I'm excited. I don't even know where we're going. Yeah, really. yeah, like yeah, just the get map of there. the country are going yeah. all over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll get a really good feel yeah. for, for the whole country. Um, so you're spending time in London this week and mm -hmm. you've got a gig on Thursday mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So how are you feeling about a slightly, a slightly smaller gig this time in London compared to what you did over the weekend? Yeah, but I think it's going to be just, it's it's kind of a more intimate crowd too, so that's nice. I'll be able to share more stories and kind of give everyone the behind the scenes version of the songs and do acoustic strip down. So I love those shows too. They're always so much fun. You get to meet more people, which I like that part too. Yeah, um, definitely. It's, it's an amazing way mm -hmm. to experience London as well, yeah. performing to Londoners. Um, so. Tell me, where did it all start for you? Let's get a bit of an idea about your career. So sure. You first released music in 2014. Yes, yes. So I've been in Nashville over 10 years. I'm originally from a tiny little town in New York, so very, very far from New York City. I grew up on a little grape farm. Um, and my mom's a musician. She's a church organist, piano teacher, so that's kind of how I come by it. And yeah, I moved to Nashville to write songs, and I've been there ever since. Got signed to Curb in 2011, and yeah, I've been releasing music a little bit since then, but this is really my first big single out at Country Radio, so I'm just thrilled because it's, it's been a minute, it's been a wild ride. I'm thankful to finally be here and get and release music and do the thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's what a, a journey. Yeah. And your latest single, Hypocrite, mm -hmm. what can you tell us about that song? Hypocrite's a song I wrote in 2019 with my best friend, um, Natalie Stovall, who's in that Runaway June band. You guys probably know them. They're great. Um, and I was technically living in her driveway at the time because I had parked my Airstream trailer. I think you guys call them caravans yeah. here. Um, in her driveway, and I would Airbnb my house out on the weekends, and I would go stay there, you know, when I had guests staying at my house. And so I was staying in the Airstream one day, and I was going through this breakup with this guy, and I just... You know, I was kind of trying to ignore that it was happening and pretend that it, I was totally fine, but you know, Natalie's my best friend and she knew. And so I was trying to write this song and having a hard time, was getting emotional. And I texted her and I was like, can you just come outside and help me with this one? And she did. And so it just made it so much more special when Curb picked this to be my single because Natalie and I went to college together. So we're kind of getting to share this dream at the same time, you know, seeing the video for the first time and seeing Colin Stovall at the end of it, you know, just being like, oh, the, like our little college selves would never believe this was happening, you know. So it, it kind of makes it more, like, easy to celebrate, too. I have a hard time with the whole, like, narcissism of being an artist sometimes. It's, like, hard to be like, why is my giant face on this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this, is, this feels weird. But knowing that it's something that she created, too, like, kind of lets me celebrate it a little bit easier in yeah. a, way, a weird way. So it's just, it's fun to share it with her and um, yeah we're climbing the charts already and we're out there you know promoting the single and it's just it's a dream 